Good news, everybody. I have noticed an uptick in fan showdown submissions or even resubmissions of people that like are still watching that have submitted their design seasons ago that want to give their shot or give their fan a shot in season six. So given the current popularity of the fan showdown, I decided let's see what you guys have been up to in season six, episode three of the fan showdown. Today's video is sponsored by World of Warships. World of Warships is a free-to-play naval warfare-themed game available on PC. There's new content for World of Warship released every month, whether it's ships or in-game nations, costumes, or even new ship classes. You can always count on enjoying fresh new gameplay on World of Warships. Other than that, the graphics are top-notch, and World of Warships has over 40 unique maps with dynamic weather and all the conditions you could ever want during a stunning naval battle. And what type of ship you bring to that naval battle is totally up to you because World of Warships has more than one class of ship to choose from. You have things like battleships, destroyers, aircraft carriers, cruisers, and submarines. My personal favorite are aircraft carriers and submarines. What does that say about me? You tell me. So if that sounds fun to you, check out the link in the description below or the pinned comment and download World of Warships today. And make sure to use my promo code BRAVO to get yourself a huge starter pack. In said starter pack, you're going to get 500 doubloons, 1.5 million credits, 7 days of premium account time, and a ship. Oh, and fun fact, World of Warships is now available on console, so give it a try over there. See how you like it. Now, while I was browsing through all the submissions, all the new submissions submissions to the fan showdown, I wanted to like see if there's any trends starting to develop. Remember like the cheater season that was like four, everything kind of evolved into the cheater. I wanted to see what was the idea in everybody's head. And it seems like every single fan had some sort of intake accompanying them. So this looks like the season of the intake cone. Intake cones are back. So I grabbed four designs that have intake cones on them. And we're gonna see if they're any good or if this is just a fool's errand. Now, first up, we have Chemist2999 and his fan, the Pressure Master. Now, on the surface, this fan design doesn't really look groundbreaking, to, to say the least. But if we've learned anything over the years of doing the fan showdown, it is that, you know, looks are, aren't always what really matters. Sometimes the simplest fan is the best fan. The Pressure Master was designed with static pressure in mind, the chemist said, and the design itself came from looking at the fume extractor on his laser cutter. I guess his fume extractor must look like this, and he thought it was a good static pressure fan, so there you go. The Pressure Master is a 15 blade design with a ring around the outside. Now, in general, fans with higher blade counts tend to produce more static pressure than, you know, fans with fewer blades. This is because more blades can generate a denser airflow by directing and compressing the air more effectively. So this fan should do all right. However, we all know that there's more to designing a good fan than just having a whole bunch of blades. The blade shape, the angle, the spacing, it all plays a role in the fan's, you know, performance. And if we're honest, this is a pretty basic looking fan. But again, like I said, sometimes basic is all you need. But if you're looking for something a bit more unique, this next one might be right up your alley. This is the Slim, which was created by Gene. Gene said the goal for this design was lightness. The idea here was trying to make the fan as lightweight as physically possible to try to gain as many RPM as possible for hopefully a bit more performance. The Slim is another 15 blade design, which I found very interesting. Everybody seems to be shooting for 15 blades. I don't know why that is, but here we are. But the, the blades on the Slim are much smaller. They're much thinner. Any material that could be removed has been removed from the hub to try to reduce its weight as much as possible while still maintaining some structural rigidity. Not even some, quite a bit. This, thing, this thing's pretty stout. But the fan itself isn't the only uniquely designed part of this assembly. The shroud is very interesting as well. Gene said the shroud was created to be similar to a turbo intake. The opening of the shroud is actually a bit smaller than the fan disc diameter. And Gene said he's hoping that this will help him produce a bit more static pressure. Interesting. Moving on. Now this next design is stepping a bit, a bit more outside the box. This is the rack seal and it was created by Cosmic Cupcake. Cosmic Cupcake said they liked the idea of a blower cooler like you would see on a graphics card. Mostly old graphics cards at this point. Almost all new graphics cards have some form of multiple actual fans, but they used to come with blower fans, and I'm sure some of them out there still do, and Cosmic Cupcake, he's a fan. Cosmic said the design intent behind this fan was to create a radio fan that would be quieter than a traditional radio fan or centrifugal fan. 
by using larger blades that were swept to hopefully try to dilute the noise output of the fan disc. And when it was all said and done, the fan design actually ended up looking like a mixture of both a radial and an axial fan, which is kind of interesting. Now, in general, radial fans or centrifugal fans or blower fans tend to produce more static pressure than axial fans just due to the fundamental differences in their airflow patterns. However, there is a problem with those fundamental differences in airflow airflow patterns when you are considering putting that fan on an axial fan frame like the A12X25, and that is that the air comes in and is kind of shot out perpendicular to the fan disc, which is no braino for the A12X25 frame. However, this is where the rather clever shroud comes in. The shroud of the Raxial's main purpose is to redirect the airflow rearwards. So it'll be interesting to see if this fan will be able to move enough air to gain the advantages of like a blower type fan while also having to redirect that air 90 degrees rearwards. Also, this fan disc is quite small, but if it works, it'll be pretty interesting. Now this last one though, takes interesting to a whole new level. This is the anti-stall and it was created by Rory. Now this fan did require a bit of uh, assembly, but I found it very, very well designed. All the blades printed separately to the hub and to the nose cone, the shroud printed in two pieces, but everything printed very well and went together very easily. Now at first glance, you're gonna say, well, this just looks like another cheater type fan, but there is a difference. And that difference is this little yellow ring at the very top, just above the blades. The ring has small triangles around the perimeter and this ring is actually designed to sit slightly above the, the purple intake cone in this particular case. Now this is where it gets interesting. The idea here is that when you put this fan on the static pressure tester, as the pressure builds up into the tube and back pressure starts to push back against the fan disc. Now normally it would just kind of seep around the fan disc and cause a bunch of turbulence, but because this ring is here, he's hoping that any air that seeps up around the fan disc We'll travel up behind this ring and then through the triangles back into the fan disc itself. And he's hoping this will improve static pressure and make the fan more efficient. And I really like the idea. It just seems, it seems, it seems like a good idea. I don't know why, but something about it just seems smart and I hope it works. I'm actually curious to know if when we look at the smoke test, if we'll be able to see any of that smoke kind of working its way back up. I doubt it because most of the time when the smoke moves through a fan, it's kind of gets diluted quite a bit. Plus there won't be a lot of back pressure in our smoke test setup, but keep an eye out. Now, before we see how well all these designs did, let's first have a listen because you know, in season six, if the fans tie in the static pressure, the noise output is the tiebreaker. So if a fan finishes the same, whatever one's quieter is gonna be the one that did best. The pressure master came in around 55.3 dBA. The slim came in around 47.5. The anti-stall came in around 50.3. and the rack seal came in around 49.8. In the static pressure test, the pressure master came in at 2.3 millimeters of H2O, the slim came in at 2.2, the anti-stall came in at three, and the rack seal came in at 2.2. Placing the anti-stall in first place, the pressure master in second, the slim in third, and the rack seal in fourth. And overall they finished fourth, 
10th, 11th, and 12th. So although it's hard to see if this little ring actually did what it was intended to, the fan itself performed pretty good. Not only did it finish first place amongst its competitors of the day, it finished fourth overall. Now, if this episode of The Fan Showdown has sparked your curiosity and you want to get involved in The Fan Showdown, make sure to go down into the description below. There's lots of resources you can use to help you design a fan. But most importantly, there's a link to my Thingiverse where you can find a drawing that shows the critical dimensions you need to hit to make sure your fan fits on the A12X25. And after you get your fan designed, I need at least a .stl or a .stp file sent to thefanshowdown at gmail.com and I'll print them out and we'll get to testing and hopefully somebody can put up some huge static pressure numbers, which would be very interesting. But thank you guys all for watching. Thank you to everybody that's submitted a design or resubmitted an old design. And even if you haven't submitted a design, you're just here to watch. Thank you a lot. It's very appreciative and I'll see you in the next one.